First at four, breaking news in the Luana Simon criminal case. Will she stand trial on charges connected to Larry Nassar? We have the latest. And it's President Trump versus the squad again. He goes after Detroit's Rashida Tlaib in front of high school students. We'll tell you what he said. Paula? Well, I think there are probably vendors at almost every convention, but at the NAACP boutique, you actually get to see the story of the products as they're being made before you actually purchase them. Well, we got thunderstorms invading from the north. This is going to be an impact on tonight's commute, but the temperature's only going up from here. We'll check them both out coming up right now, first at four. Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. That breaking news coming from uh, a person of interest in a Detroit serial killer case who's now been charged in another sexual assault case. Prosecutors just announced D'Angelo Martin is charged in connection to the kidnapping and sexual assault of a 51 year old Detroit woman last month. Martin is scheduled to be arraigned on those charges tomorrow. The investigation into three murders is also ongoing. Martin hasn't been charged in any of those cases, but is facing charges in a criminal sexual conduct case. We'll have more on this story coming up at 5 o'clock. Happening right now, former MSU President Luana Simon is in court. Closing arguments underway to help determine if she goes to trial on charges connected to the Larry Nassar scandal. Our Devin Skillian live in the newsroom today. And Devin, uh, you're following this. It's been a long process here. Boy, it sure has extremely long. A preliminary hearing that's now really been going on for months, Jason. Right now, the defense has been making their closing argument for about the last 90 minutes or so. Prosecution took about a half an hour finishing up making their case. But this case, of course, revolves around the allegations that Simon was not honest with investigators about just how much she knew and when she knew it about abuse allegations that had been made against Nassar, who served as a doctor for the MSU Athletics Department at the time. Prosecutors say she knowingly lied about what she knew or didn't know, and if she had told the truth, Nassar could have been stopped sooner. Well, the defense argues it's not an issue of lying, it's an issue of remembering, which is not a crime. MSU cleared a monster and they put him back in the position to sexually assault dozens more victims before the truth came out in the newspaper in 2016. Great institutions like great people have to do more than look good. They have to do good. They have to choose to do good. That didn't happen here. Why is Luanna Simon expected to recall a name allegedly mentioned to her four years ago if it was mentioned at all? You cannot find that someone violated this statute and committed the crimes that Dr. Simon is charged with if they simply got their facts wrong due to a lack of memory. He said, I was aware. And that really is what a lot of this boils down to, whether or not, for example, she had been told that she was a focus of the investigation. Michigan State Police uh, detectives say yes. They told her every time they talked to her that she was. She doesn't remember it that way. Now, after the closing arguments, it'll be up to the judge to decide uh, whether or not this all goes to trial. We've got a crew at the courtroom. We'll bring you new information just as soon as it develops, uh, not only here, but at clickondetroit.com. We get a decision. All right, Jason, back to you. Yeah, all right, Devin, we'll be watching. Thanks. You bet. Closer to home, a Southfield man has learned he will stand trial in a shooting. 31-year-old Charles Phillips is charged with assault with intent to murder for allegedly opening fire inside a gas station at Seven Mile and Telegraph Road last month. A 13-year-old boy and 23-year-old man were wounded in this, but they are expected to recover. Meantime, a driver responsible for a deadly road rage crash faced a judge for sentencing today. James Sharp pleaded guilty to reckless driving causing death and driving on a revoked license causing death. Today, though, the judge changed his recommendation for sentencing and is giving both sides two weeks to reevaluate this plea. If Sharp accepts the new deal, he will spend five to 15 years in prison. Energy companies say they are working around the clock to restore power to everyone in Metro Detroit. The latest numbers here now from Consumers Energy. It has 5,000 customers currently without power, while DTE is working to restore electricity to 53,000 homes and businesses. DTE has said it hopes to have most, if not all, of those customers turned back on by the end of the day Wednesday. All right, let's get a check of the weather. And uh, any chance we could see some of those late afternoon showers today, Ben Bailey? I think so, Jason. In fact, a lot of them starting to invade our north zone right now. But this is garden variety stuff. We're not expecting any severe weather. Uh, there are some downpours there, but they're not nearly as intense as what we went through at the end of last week and the weekend. 
a couple lightning strikes starting to appear. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a couple areas of some small hail, like pea size hail, uh, with some of the more stronger storms. In fact, most of those look like they're remaining in the center part of the state, moving towards Lansing. This is just mainly rain. It's starting to move into Genesee County. And for the most part, a lot of this is north of 69, but it is all headed south. So we will be seeing some of it pretty much area wide, at least to the evening. Temperatures fall as the storms fade tonight. We should be dry by 10 o'clock. We'll talk about the rising temperatures in the 10 day forecast coming up. Jason. All right, Ben. President Trump is quickly turning his attacks against four Democratic women into talking points. Today he spoke to a conservative conservative high school group in Washington, D.C. Detroit Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib is among the women dubbed the squad. The squad. Yeah. Well, by calling them out because we don't like when they talk about evil Jews. We don't like when they say horrible things about Israel. Yeah, I'm not going nowhere. The president also said Tlaib was like a, quote, crazed lunatic and wondered aloud who elected her. Many teens cheered the president's comments. Mr. Trump told them they are bringing an incredible rebirth in the American spirit. Democrats and Republicans will both be looking to score political points while Robert Mueller is the man in the middle. This is all tomorrow when the former special counsel will testify before two House committees. Some Democrats would like to build a case for impeachment. The Justice Department has told Mueller, though, to keep his testimony within the scope of his already published report. And you can see whatever he says as it happens tomorrow morning right here on Local 4 and streaming on ClickOnDetroit.com. Coverage starts at 8.15. Great Britain has a new prime minister chosen by members of his conservative party, not directly by the voters. Boris Johnson, an outspoken supporter of Brexit, wants to end Britain's ties to the European Union. He replaces Theresa May, who could not get a deal done. Johnson says he'll have Britain out of the union by the end of October with or without a formal agreement. With thousands of people in town for the NAACP convention, some local businesses have a great opportunity to show off what they can do. In some cases, they're actually making their products right inside Kobo Center. Our Paula Tutman with some folks tonight were looking to give their businesses a boost. Hi, Paula. Hi, so no doubt about it. There's a lot of eye candy here as well as credit card candy. I mean, take a look at this. This is Henry who's working on a custom piece right now. And these pieces are not only incredibly beautiful, but I just love the fact that you get to hear the stories of the artisans as well as the stories behind the products uh, before you buy them or even try them. It is more than just shopping at the NAACP boutique space at Cobo Hall this week. It is understanding that there is a story behind every product. The Native Americans say if you have the power, you must introduce that power to the metal. To wear an item created by artisan Henry Osagefo Colby of Timbuktu Art Colony out of Atlanta is to understand that he has a love affair with metals. So I'm a craftsman, but I'm, first of all, an artist. Silver, copper, iron, silver solder, and you can watch imagination and skill at work before it lands on your fingers, your wrists, your ears. Voila, fish and chips. All right. A right away pen is not just a pen. These are custom ink pens made from acrylics, all different kinds of exotic woods. Uh, we have themed pens. That's when you're using a writing implement custom designed by Cora Williams. And she is a Detroiter. My pen appreciation goes back to elementary school. Her use of intricately designed inlaid wood, heavy metals, and tasteful bling can come from her imagination or yours. There's no limit to what you can get. Somebody came yesterday, they ordered a pen, they wanted the 23rd Psalm on the pen, and I'm able to accommodate that. By trade, she is a journeyman and a millwright who has turned that art into this art. And then there are the Yummy Brothers, four pint-sized titans of the kitchen. The Yummy Brothers is a gourmet catering company. The Billingsley Brothers operate out of Detroit and Atlanta. They make the cookies, about 5,000 dozen a week. They market the cookies with expertise well beyond their years. $20 per dozen, and the reason why is because they're gourmet, no added preservatives, and we sell them by the dozen. They sell the cookies with cute, 
little boy charm. Thank you. So, you, you know, the, the really good news is that the NAACP boutique has been really, really busy. The bad news is this is the last day for it, but you can certainly find a lot of these artisans online. I want you to stay with us because, Jason, right over there, the job fair. It's really an interesting job climate. We're going to have that story coming up live at 5 with some interesting information on the climate and the forecast of jobs. It's really a good story. Voila, fish and chips. I love it, Paula. Thanks. Uh, tomorrow is a big day at the convention with the presidential forum in the morning. Eight of the Democrats running for president are expected at that forum. You can see it streaming live at clickondetroit.com starting at 10 a.m.